the biggest motivator for us and for me personally is that there is a massive opportunity. There is a massive opportunity for us to build an economy that can run in the long term, that can deliver more value. That's a pretty big motivator. I felt intensely frustrated in the early days of research in this space, in understanding that resources were finite, in trying to change what I could in my own life. I felt frustrated because the system did not enable me to do what I wanted to do, to do what I would have liked to have done. And so within the circular economy space, of course I do what I can at home, I have a garden, I grow my own veg, I do as much as I can, but the system will not, will not enable, even if we all change what we did, our, our economy to function in the long term. So my frustration I put into the system and how we can enable this systemic change, which I believe is genuinely a massive economic opportunity and outside of economic, a massive opportunity for the economy moving forwards. Well, a circular economy you can describe in two ways. You can either say it's an economy that keeps products, components and the materials within them at their highest value and utility at all times, splitting materials into biologic and, and technical. That's one way of describing it, which often people understand in principle, but it doesn't, give, it doesn't paint a picture. If you describe a circular economy by comparing it to a linear economy, people tend to understand more quickly. So you could say a linear economy is an economy where you take something out of the ground, make something out of it, and then at the end it gets thrown away, and that could be a banana, or it could be a train, or it could be a vehicle. Um, but at the end we get what we can out of it, but it's not designed for what we can get out at the end. Within a circular economy you design that product to fit within a system, so it's valorized to its highest level at all times, and you would design it so you can remanufacture it, disassemble it, decomponentize it, and then ultimately recover all the materials and feed them back into the economy. And that could be biological or technical. There's those two ways of describing it really. The greatest driver really for the circular economy is the fact that we have finite resources. We've seen a century of price declines raised in a decade. We have more volatility in raw material prices than we've ever seen before in history. That linear model whereby we use them up cannot run in the long term. Circular models deliver more value. It's more economically beneficial for companies to grow circularity than linearity. We've got three reports we've done with McKinsey showing a in excess of a trillion US dollars worth of economic opportunity. They're conservative figures. The first study we did only looked at goods that cycle in more than one year and less than 10 for Europe. It was only looking at cycling less than 25% of the materials, components or products every year. So hugely conservative and it was 630 billion US dollars per year for Europe. So businesses are doing this because it makes them more money. There are many other benefits but that's the biggest driver of this. Our goal as an organisation is not to go out to the general public and tell everyone what circular economy is. We're into systemic change, so our goal as an organisation is to go to the beginning of the pipe and say how do we build a food production system or a global economy which can run in the long term and what needs to be changed to do that. At the end of the pipe are all the consumers, they're the customers, they're the people that buy the products. Things should change to enable them to make the right cho choices or just the choices that are offered to them which hopefully will be more circular in the future and it, it doesn't need to be about them uh, requesting circular products because they, they're not out there today. It's about building a system that will enable that change. Well, the goal is an economy whereby materials cycle biologically and technically and the economy is designed to enable that to happen to its highest level. I mean, it's, it's the more circular we are, the better we are. And we're a long way from that at the moment, but the great thing is there's so much progress to be made. <laughs> We work with young people all over the world through education around circular economics. They get this. They get the opportunity. So I think in order to, to bring real change, we need an entire generation of young people to see the opportunities of a circular economy, to see there's a different way of doing things, a better way of doing things, a restorative, regenerative way of doing things. They get that. They want to be part of that. They also want to do as much as fast as possible. And that's the, the limit with the efficiency route, is when you say, you know, you mustn't do that, you mustn't do that, you mustn't travel. Actually, they, they almost say, well, what can I do? then. When they learn about circular economy, the faster they do it, the better. The faster we build regenerative farming, the better. The faster we can create nutrient flows, the better. We can actually rebuild natural capital. We can build restorative regenerative models. We can decouple growth from resource constraints. They get it. They can see opportunity. They can see growth. They can see prosperity for themselves, their families. That really works. So the more young people get that, the better. I'd love to be back at sea again and, and making the decision to leave that for the circular economy or for you know, the study of the global economy was the hardest decision I have ever made in my life. I had no wish to stop.
I will never have had enough of it. And yes, I do miss it, but I have no regrets. It would be an innovation in education so that everyone would see the world through a circular lens and they wouldn't learn the linear way and then have to break their thinking to build a circular world. They would learn to see systems and they would learn to understand how we can valorise things to the highest level.